It's been almost two years since the release of the battery electric bus video on this channel. Now since then, there have been a fair share of updates. In this week's video, we will be looking at two of the more significant short-term developments regarding battery electric buses for TransLink in the past two years. And while we will touch a bit on the environmental side of things, I kind of wanted to have this video focus on the logistical side of things. Now if you do like transit related content like this, then please consider subscribing to the channel. It really helps a lot as we journey towards 1000 subscribers. The first thing we will cover is the 15 additional battery electric buses for Route 100. TransLink has decided to go with the Nova Bus LFSE Plus model for this order, bringing the total to 19 battery electric buses in the fleet. The order is funded by the federal government and costs $16 million. Now with this order, TransLink has been designated as the launch customer for these buses. In other words, TransLink will be the first transit agency to order this type of bus. The pilot unit in this order, so the first bus, is set to arrive sometime in the third quarter of this year or fall 2022. And after that, the following 14 buses will follow in 2023. Originally, these buses were set to come in 2020, 2021, but we all know what happened. What's interesting is that a statement in this updated document mentioned that TransLink was essentially cornered into buying buses with larger batteries which will last longer. In essence, there was no short charge option that was offered by the bidders. Now these buses will differ from their current Nova Bus counterparts, 19301 and 19302, in that instead of using the overhead fast charging system, they will be using an in-depot slower charger in the yard. According to the company website, the range is listed between 340 and 470 kilometers for a single charge, which is significantly higher than the current fast charging models that are out there on Route 100. And we know this as with the current setup, buses have to charge at the end of the route, and that in turn adds time to the schedule. Now the schedule at the time of posting currently requires 19 buses on the route during the peak hour, and that does not include any spares. But even then, because there are that many buses on the route during peak hour, that doesn't mean that all those buses will be battery electric buses. It would make logical sense to keep a few inside Hamilton Transit Center for maintenance purposes. Hamilton, by the way, is the depot in charge of the four current battery electric buses. Now sometime in February, they did bring in a demonstrator bus to do various testing and other experiments. After all, this order is part of the Qtrix Pan-Canadian Integration Trial. This program involves four different transit systems to test intercompatibility between different components such as chargers, batteries, and the buses themselves. And the main goal is to standardize everything to reduce manufacturing costs. And according to this document, some cold weather testing was completed sometime in March 2022. In any case, it's only a matter of time before the pilot bus arrives and more testing can begin before it enters revenue service. And since these are new buses, there may or may not be older non-electric buses shipped to other yards. Feel free to comment where you think some of these buses will end up. But I think Surrey is in some sort of need right now, so they can take some of the CNG buses in Hamilton right now to fill in some gaps. Now this is the first order for standard 40-foot buses since 2019, and the entire system is still recalibrating from a full return to classes this year, while at the same time, it is still undergoing the effects of permanent work-from-home policy implemented at some workplaces. Lastly, some of you may be wondering why TransLink did not go with the new flyer variant of the slow charging bus. Now the reason for this is the most logical but may not be the actual reason why the agency went for the Novas instead of the new flyer buses. Simply put, the LFS E Plus was introduced in 2019, while the Excelsior Charge NG, the new flyer slow charge variant, was unveiled as early as spring 2021, which was four months after this order was exercised. Nonetheless, the buses from this order are just around the corner, and it is only a matter of time before we get the official fleet numbers. Now the next update is that 57 replacement buses are due to start appearing on Tri-Cities area bus routes starting in 2023-2024. Now we do not know the model of buses as the order has not been assigned at the time of posting. We also don't know if the buses will be the in-yard slow charge or the fast charge variant ordered in 2019. However, as we will see later, I am led to believe that these will be for the overhead fast charge variant. So if an update does come after this video comes out, please check the pinned comments and the Instagram which I will also link in the description. 
Now the number is also of significance. Right now there are 57 older new flyer diesel buses in the fleet. And for the sake of visual reference, I'll just bring one up on screen right now. Right away, this presents an issue as some of you bus spotters know, these buses operate out of Surrey Transit Center. But right now it is unclear whether or not these 57 buses will be replaced by some of the outgoing CNG units, which are currently in Port Coquitlam that will be displaced by these battery electric buses. So in other words, the exact allocation for what will replace the 57 buses in Surrey is unknown at this time and is purely speculative. But I wouldn't be surprised if those Poco CNG units end up being transferred to Surrey to replace the 57 diesel buses. Now as far as Port Coquitlam Transit Center is concerned, there has not been any major upgrades for quite some time now. Therefore, it is valid to guess that this presents an opportunity for a major upgrade to take place. This is further supplemented by the fact that according to the transit agency, the completion of Marple Transit Center has been pushed back to 2027 owing to the effects of the pandemic. To review, MTC will be a new multi-level storage facility that will be located up against the Fraser River just south of Kent Avenue. The agency has decided to reinvest the efforts made towards the new yard into upgrades for Poco Quitlam Transit Center. After all, Poco is the smallest and also one of the oldest bus yards of Coast Mountain Bus Company. Second of all, aside from the 160 and the Maple Ridge routes, most routes are in the 10 km range, which is much shorter than something like the 100, which is 15 km long. So we're talking about routes like the 151, 152, 153, and 169. According to the updated document, there will be 8 on-route chargers by 2023, followed by the in-depot charging equipment in 2024, along with another 8 on-route chargers in 2026. All in all, the buses along with the garage improvements at Port Coquitlam will cost $120 million with federal funding approved in May of this year. In any case, this is expected to be the first time that TransLink is fully in charge of a fleet of battery electric buses not bound by any sort of experiments or trial. And this is also the first of the larger batches of battery electric buses. The first 19 buses were ordered in smaller batches for the purposes of testing. So in actuality, it's valid to say that these are the first full production units being bought by the transit system. Beyond that, there are many more orders for battery electric buses for other yards, including the new Marple Transit Center set to open in 2027. However, I feel like we are still way too far to identify any other implications to operations and stuff like that. That said, there is a file uploaded in 2021 that has the various allocations for these different bus orders. But aside from the number of buses and the allocations, I feel like we are still too far away to confirm any other info and any further discussion. And especially here on out, things can get very volatile. Who knows, perhaps New Flyer or Nova Bus will continue to increase range and battery capacity by continuing to pump out new variants of their existing battery electric bus models. But to summarize, everything mentioned in this video is part of TransLink's plan to pursue the aggressive option of the low carbon fleet strategy. Now this video attempts to focus on the impact to TransLink and Metro Vancouver. I'm sure that there are other videos out there that discuss battery electric buses in North America as a whole, so please consider continuing those debates in those videos, and please remember to keep the comments section as civilized as possible. Thanks for watching, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next one. Cheers!